And what I do here is I just go back two years, look at my favorites video, and look at the products, see if I still love them, if I've used them up completely, if I prefer something else over those items. The first time that I saw this video filmed was from Marnie from Miss Gold Girl, but I have also seen Kristen Game film these videos too. I'll link both of them down in the down bar down there. So anyway, moving on to the actual products. The very first item I actually don't have anymore. That was the Pink Sugar Hair Perfume. And if I have a photo, I'll insert it right here. I think I picked that up for around $15 and I picked mine up at Sephora. I think Sephora still has it in stock. I've seen it at the JCPenney's Sephora's and I know that Ulta also carries that. I just really enjoyed that pink sugar scent in my hair and it was a little bit less drying than spraying perfume directly into your hair. I actually have not repurchased it since I finished it off in 2014 but uh, I, I've picked it up a few times that I've been in Ulta and Sephora. I just haven't bit the bullet and bought it again but I most certainly would. Then the next two products were the Victoria's Secret Bombshells in Bloom body lotion and perfume and I've since finished off the lotion but I still have the perfume. This is what the perfume bottle looks like here and I think in February of 2015, was it February or April? One of those two, I mentioned this in my favorites video and I had seen this at Victoria's Secret on clearance because they were discontinuing it. So this is what the bottle looks like and I have picked up a little body spray of the fragrance too just because I really enjoy the fragrance and you can't purchase it anymore. I'm sure you could probably find it online somewhere if not crazy discounted on the Victoria's Secret website or on Amazon or eBay or something, but I think I have plenty of this fragrance to go around. I wrote down the fragrance down here. It has pink freesia, red apple, and water lily, and I just thought it was the perfect spring and summer scent, and I really enjoyed the body lotion, not so much for moisturizing purposes, but because the scent seemed to linger with the body lotion longer than any other fragranced perfume lotion, you know what I mean? Then I mentioned this guy right here. I've talked about this a ton on my channel. You guys are probably super sick of hearing about this, but this is the Pond's Luminous Finish BB Cream right here, and I have mine in the light shade. I've actually, this is my third container of this, and I was almost finished with the one that I was using in my favorites video from two years ago. I think it was around $9 at Target, and then since then, since it's been discontinued from like the major chain stores, Big Lots was carrying it for a little while from anywhere between three and four dollars. So I don't know if your Big Lots still carries it, but if you see this in the Big Lots, definitely test it out, see if you like it. I think it's worth a couple bucks, honestly. I would probably pay $12 for this. I'm actually wearing this today and I didn't even plan that out, so that's kind of strange, but um, I think it provides a very nice amount of coverage, but it doesn't feel super cakey on my skin. So I really like this, and in the light shade, it's, it almost fits me perfect. I'm an NW15. I think if you are neutral or have cool undertones, it would be fantastic for you. So they had this, and then they also have a medium shade. They only had two shades. Maybe that's why they discontinued it. I'm not sure, but it's a really lovely product. But next up was the L'Oreal Magic Lumi Light Infusing Primer, and I'll insert a photo. You can actually purchase this at Walmart for around $11.50, and if you go to Ulta, I think it's $12.99, you know, $13, but you're only getting 0.68 fluid ounces, and that kind of bothered me that there really wasn't a lot of product in there. Now, I'm going to go off on a little tangent here for a minute, and I'm going to be discussing the Laura Mercier Foundation Primer in Radiance. This little guy right here, this one's completely used up, but 
Um, I want to talk about this for a second. So this one is actually in the one fluid ounce size, and this is, let me see here, $20 at Sephora. So if you bought two of the L'Oreal light infusing primers, you'd be paying $23 if you got it at Walmart or $26 if you got it at Ulta. Now, in my opinion, I feel like they do basically the same thing. This one's a little bit of a thicker consistency and the L'Oreal one is a little bit thinner, but I like wearing the radiant kind of luminous primers either down before my foundation or BB cream, or I like mixing them in with the foundation. I did notice that the L'Oreal product had a really strong alcohol scent to it, and I looked at the ingredients, and actually the fifth ingredient in the L'Oreal one is alcohol denat, and that's actually denatured alcohol, which is also known as ethanol. And if you look up the Paula's web, Paula's Choice website, I'll link the link down in, <laughs> I'll put the link down in the description box down there where I found this information, but it discussed uh, having alcohols in your skincare products and your makeup and the different kind of alcohols and what's good for your skin, what's bad for your skin, that kind of a thing. Anyway, the fifth ingredient being denatured alcohol is kind of crazy because that explains the alcohol scent. And since I have dry skin, I really don't want products drying out my skin that are supposed to be giving off like a luminous glow <laughs> to mimic like a, a little bit more oil production that I don't have. It's said on the website that these volatile alcohols like ethanol gives whatever product you're using a quick drying finish um, it leaves it feeling weightless on the skin, and it's good for people with oily skin, and I definitely don't have that. It also said on there, if it's within the first five ingredients, it can tend to cause irritation, dryness, and free radical damage with your skin, and that's just not something that I'm into. Now, with the Laura Mercier ingredients, I looked that up, and the seventh ingredient was cetyl alcohol, and that is actually a fatty alcohol. So it doesn't cause irritation to your skin, and it's actually really good for dry skin. So I thought that was kind of interesting that there were different types of alcohols in the products. Back to the point that I was originally making, I would much rather purchase the Laura Mercier than I would want to repurchase the L'Oreal one. Even though I love the L'Oreal one, I thought towards the end it might have been breaking me out, but it might have just been some kind of combination of my reaction to the ingredients. I don't know. This one feels like a moisturizer on the skin, so I highly recommend this one if you're in the market for one of those luminous primers. Anyway, I will be repurchasing this one again instead of the L'Oreal one. Back to the favorites video, the next product that I was talking about was the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer. This is a brand new one. I've since finished that old one off. Absolutely love this stuff. I've been playing with my MAC Pro Longwear Concealer and I tried that out a couple days ago and everywhere that I put it, like right in this region here, underneath the eyes a little bit, my skin just looked so dry and like my dry patches kind of shone through. I tried this one out today and it just has a little bit more of a moisturizing formula. It doesn't dry my skin out. It's very creamy and it just blends beautifully. This has been my all-time favorite concealer for over two years now, obviously, but this is waterproof and they have a wide range of colors. And the next product that I talked about was the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and I would use that one with this kind of in combination together. And I got the shade Light 2, which is vanilla, and I've And I've actually had two of those. I would most definitely repurchase that again. I'm just waiting till the next VIB sale to pick some up. But that's a fantastic concealer. If you haven't tried that out, I think Sephora has started carrying the little travel size of the Radiant Creamy Concealer. So instead of, you know, shelling out $29, if you don't know if it would work for you, uh, I think it's 15, 12 or $15 for the travel size of it, and you can test it out that way. Next up was the NYC Expert Last Lipstick. It was in shade number 447, which is Forever Fuchsia. I searched my lipstick collection high and low. I have no idea where that lipstick is at. 
but I do have two comparable shades. These are almost spot on dupe. I think that lipstick is only about three or four dollars at Walmart or your local drugstore. So maybe check that out if you want something a little bit cheaper. So I do have this MAC lipstick here. This one's in Candy Yum Yum and it's a matte and it is extremely similar to this. I think I even compared them in another video that I did, like my all-time favorite pink or bright pink lipsticks or something. This is Candy Yum Yum from MAC right here. This is pretty much the same shade, like a really bright, hot pink color. That's it there. And then the other one that's pretty similar is from Milani. And this one is in number 14, Rose Hip. The Milani one just has the slightest bit of a sheen to it, more like a satin finish. But this is the Milani Rose Hip, and this is Candy Yum Yum. They look really different in the viewfinder right now, but I, I promise you when it's on your lips, they both give off the same kind of shade. You know what I mean? Like a really bright, hot pink. So that lipstick was very similar to these two here. So maybe maybe even somewhere in between these two, if these two had a baby. <laughs> the last product was the MAC Lipstick in Flat Out Fabulous. This has been a long time favorite. I think I picked this up in November of 2013, I think is when I picked it up. And I think this is my second tube of this too. So this is all that I have left in this one here. That is a swatch of it right there. Now on the lips, it looks entirely different than the Milani one. These all look pretty similar right now, but I, I tell you what, this one, it's it has more purple to it. It's more blue toned. It's like a dark, a dark lip, but it's bright at the same time. It's really crazy how it does that. I just need to finish this off and just go pick up a new one, but that was Flat Out Fabulous from MAC, and I still love this one today. So those were all of my favorites from two years ago. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.